I'd like to welcome you to my first flipped classroom, um, my first flipped video. And for those of you who aren't familiar with that, I'm going to be giving instruction to you outside of the classroom via the web. And so you can access that on my YouTube video. Then when we come back into class, um, we're going to be spending lots of time getting into deeper discussion. We'll be spending time um, doing projects and activities where we can explore these topics more in depth. Today we're going to be talking about Sub-Saharan Africa. And we said that Sub-Saharan Africa, the prefix sub means below, like a submarine or sub-zero. And so below the Sahara Desert is this region that we're going to be discussing. Now today I'm going to focus on just the physical geography. We know that physical geography has a lot of impact on culture, on the economy of places. So we need to get a good understanding of what the physical geography is like here. Okay, when we look at the Sahara Desert, we said that a de desert is characterized typically by about 10 inches or less of rainfall every year. Now, just below that Sahara Desert, there is a very dry region. It's not quite as dry as the desert, but it's called semi-arid, and so you have a little bit more precipitation, but not, not very much. It's still very dry, and that's called the Sahel region, and so that's this band right up here. Now, the Sahel region is there's a, an issue that's a major problem for people who are living in this region called desertification. And desertification happens when land that could be used to live on or farm turns into desert. Now, what's happening is a lot of times in this, um, in this region, you have people who are overusing land for farming. Um, they're so desperate for food um, that they keep farming the same land and using up all the nutrients, or they're raising grazing animals, and the animals are eating up what little vegetation there is. And so then what happens is this dry land, the desert just expands right on over it. And so um, people in these countries along the Sahel region are losing um, part of their land each year, and it's becoming smaller and smaller. Now, within Sub-Saharan Africa, we're going to be talking about different regions. We're going to break the, our study up in four different regions. We'll be looking at West Africa, East Africa, Central Africa, and Southern Africa. Now, there's a variety of physical features that we're going to be talking about within some of these areas. For example, when we get down below the Sahel region, you do have some areas of what we call steppe. And steppe, again, is very dry, um, very little vegetation. What vegetation there is is maybe dry um, grasses, maybe a few shrubs. Um, then, when we get south of that, in the central part of Africa, we have um, a lot of tectonic activity going on in Africa. And one of the things happening here is a, a process called the development of a basin. And a basin is when tectonic activity pushes up areas around this basin and creates a low spot. And so this basin, the, probably the largest one in Africa, is called the Congo Basin. And this basin has a little bit different climate. Here, you are going to find what we call a tropical wet climate. You're going to find more of like a, a tropical rainforest. Now, as we talk about these things and these physical features and climates, I want you to think about how does this impact where people live within Africa? How does it impact population patterns? Now, coming out of that Congo Basin, when we go a little bit further south to the southwest, we have more of a desert climate again. And so you have the Namib Desert right down here and the Kalahari Desert. And so very dry areas down here as well. Now when we come back up, we've got some moisture up here and this is more of a highland area. Now we said highland is where we have we find mountain ranges. For example, you're going to find um, Mount Kilimanjaro in this region. And um, interestingly, we know that this red line here represents the equator. And on that equator, on either side of it, you have this area called the tropics. And so this should be a very warm climate. But on top of Mount Kilimanjaro, for example, it's snow covered. Um, because remember, we said elevation impacts climate as well. So even though your latitude is the main thing that determines your climate, um, it's not the only thing. And elevation is going to certainly change that. So it should be warm around the equator, but because of the elevation of the mountain, um, it happens to be very cold at the top. Now, when we get back up into this area, we also have this process called a rift. And we have this area called the Great Rift Valley. Now, the Great Rift Valley is kind of interesting. Scientists, if you look down here at the, this island called Madagascar, um, it's one of the largest islands in the world. And Madagascar, if you look at it, it almost looks like a little puzzle piece. 
and it can slide right in here near Mozambique. Now, many scientists believe that that would have separated off because of tectonic activity, and it would have separated and pulled away as tectonics plates shifted. And the same kind of process is starting, we're starting to see that happen here in this Rift Valley. In the Great Rift Valley, or what we call the Horn of Africa, over here near Somalia, if you look, this looks like a horn, maybe like a buffalo horn. And so as it's being pulled away, as the tectonic plate below the surface is, is shifting away, it's pulling this away and causing these huge rifts or these valleys. Now, it's so large that in some areas you have, um, you have walls of the valley that are as, as high as 9,000 feet from the bottom of the valley to the top of the wall. So very, very large valleys, very deep. One last thing that I want to talk about is the fact that the continent of Africa is really largely made up of plateaus. Again, it has to do with um, the rising of this land. It's a higher in elevation, very flat, but higher in elevation, and there's a, a layer of rock below that. And so the plateaus make this, the elevation of Africa, much higher than a lot of the other continents in the world. Something else that happens along those plateaus, especially in the more moist areas, you get a lot of waterfalls, um, a lot of rushing water because of these things called escarpments. And an escarpment is this jagged drop off at the edge of a plateau. All right, so again, I'd like for you to think about what we talked about today, the physical geography, and think about how that impacts the way people live in Africa.